Now, there are many different ways to play Age of Empires 2, yet I think I found personally my most favourite way to play Age of Empires 2, with battering rams going at 800 miles an hour. Oh yes, it's deja vu time, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to use these battering rams for good. Battering rams, away! Watch them arrive! Do, 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 do. Oh, and straight in they go. Take out the town centre. Well. That was easy. Well, that's one way to win a game of Age of Empires 2, I guess. Yes, I'm gonna take this game as one complete and utter fantastic victory. Ah, fantastic. Right, onwards with the video. Probably time for me to explain what on earth is happening here. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today we're back playing Age of Empires 2 HD Edition. Although it's no longer called HD Edition, I'm pretty sure it's called Age of Empires 2 Brackets 2011 or something like that on Steam. Let me check. Ah, yes, it's Age of Empires 2 2013 now because they've decided to release a new HD HD Edition. Yes, it's called the Definitive Edition because you've bought the original Age of Empires 2 and you've bought the second Age of Empires 2 HD Edition. Now it only makes sense to create the Age of Empires 2 HD HD Edition. It's double D now. Twice the definition. For only twice the price as well. Oh, it's fantastic. But yes, instead of deciding to play the Definitive Edition, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be demonstrating why you should really just be playing the HD Edition again, just with the assistance of some pretty wacky mods. You see, as fun as it is to go and buy this game again, it makes much more sense to just play the game as if it was a brand new expansion pack, which is exactly what we're going to be doing. Because if I'm honest, I'm yet to see anyone play the Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition, whereas if we hop into the multiplayer version of the HD Edition, look at how many people are playing. I mean, this isn't even prime time for Age of Empires 2 players, this is in the middle of the day, and there's literally dozens of them. <laughs> I know it's not quite anything in comparison to, say, the competitive spore scene, but it's certainly a very large amount of players. Certainly nothing to be sniffed at, that's for sure. And hey, if you're still playing Age of Empires 2 HD Edition in 2019, hats off to you. Give yourself a pat on the back as you're helping this fantastical game stay relevant. And I'll be doing my part too by making a video on a game which was originally released in 1999, that's right, over 20 years ago. I'll be making sure it stays relevant. Heck, we might even make it onto the trending page with enough of a support from you guys watching. In your face, games which were released only a couple of months ago, it's time for the 20 year old monolith of a game to get back right to where it belongs. Anyway, so what mod are we going to be playing with today? Well, we're going to be playing with the Times 256 mod for Age of Empires 2, which is a fantastic fun way of playing the game. It is effectively a Times 256 tech mod, which means you can research all of the research in the game 256 times, that is every single upgrade. Be it an upgrade which provides only plus one range to say an archer for the British, it can be researched a unlimited amount of times to give say plus 400 range to a British longbowman. Suddenly, that's quite a lot. But actually, there are some very unique strategies which are created because of this. And we're going to be demonstrating a few of my favorites here today. I know it's going to be very exciting, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this mod is best played against actual human players, but as I'm yet to find any, I'm afraid I'm going to be showing off very unique strategies against the AI. Just ones which I find very good fun. But hey, if you want to try this out yourself, make sure to grab a couple of friends, load them up, don't even tell them what mod they've downloaded, and watch them cry as you suddenly start T-Pose teleporting around them with a bunch of villagers, which also have the ability to rupture a hole in the entire galaxy with just a swing of their little pickaxe. Oh, it's a very unique game now. Now, as our first civilization which we're going to be breaking, we're going to be creating the ultimate peasant army workforce as the Spanish. You see, the Spanish are exceedingly powerful in this game for some reason. It's not like they had an empire. Oh, they did have an empire. Well, it wasn't as big as this empire, huzzah! Oh, laughs in superior empire noises. Aren't you proud of me, Queenie? <laughs> I'm sure she is. She's always proud of me. And also you, the lovely ladies and gentlemen at home, whose sweet, sweet ad revenue brings the British Empire one step closer to being resurrected once more. Because who wouldn't like that? What, none of you? What do you mean 40% of my audience is American? Why, why wouldn't the Americans want the British Empire back? This makes no sense. Come on, what? It did everything for them. Okay, right, I mean, excluding that thing and, and that thing, uh, but there were some positives, right? What do you mean all the positives were only for the British? Ah, bugger it. Bring it back anyway. It'll be a good laugh. So yes, we're going to be playing as the Spanish day, ladies and gentlemen, playing it off against some AI. Not we're going to make it a powerful AI. I'm going to say we're going to play off against... 
Ooh, let's think of the natural enemies of the Spanish. Well, it would have to be the Spanish. I mean, they did have a civil war, but no, no, no. Instead, we're going to play the Spanish off against the Japanese, a natural enemy of the Spanish, of course. And we're going to be starting in the classic standard start. Oh, yes, this is good. And we'll accept only a conquest victory. Fantastic stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let the fun commence. We're playing as the Spanish. They're wacky, they're unique, they're fantastic. Let's start this game. Oh, and also we need to up the difficulty a bit. Let's whack it onto hard. Yes, because I like a good challenge. Although there's not really going to be much of a challenge with the Spanish. Ah, and we're bam, we're into the game, ladies and gentlemen. And what a fantastic game this is. Well, so it is 2019. These graphics still technically hold up. You can clearly see that that is a, um, a villager man. Yeah, I mean, he looks like it. Kind of. Ever so slightly. Okay, there are parts of him which look like a villager. So what we're going to be doing, ladies and gentlemen, is getting our villagers to be more powerful than ever before. And because of that, we're going to need a few more of them. Now, I've made it so that the entirety of the map is completely visible, as that will allow us to keep a track of our enemy over here. That's right, the Japanese. Who are already one step ahead of me, apparently, in terms of points. Ah, they've built a mill. Now that's just cheating. Now, as we're on a fortress-style map, we don't actually have to worry about an early rush from the AI, as we are successfully surrounded by massive stone walls. The only downside to this is it means it makes it more difficult for us to actually get to the AI that we're playing off against, as they're hidden behind massive stone walls themselves. Very scary. Don't worry, life finds a way. And of course the way is a massive supply of peasant farmers. Now, just a quick disclaimer, I'm by no means the most efficient player when it comes to Age of Empires 2. I mean, this game is still having competitive tournaments multiple times a year, and it's been out for 20 years. Honestly, it's amazing, but by no means am I as qualified to comment on what's happening in the game as some of those fantastic people. I strongly recommend taking a look at T90 Official, The Spirit of the Law, and The Viper. All of them are very impressive Age of Empires players who will teach you things far better than I ever can. Oh, it would appear the Japanese are sending out their Scout Horsey Cavalry Boy. That's fine, we'll send out our Scout Horsey Cavalry Boy as a counter. Yes, a fantastic idea. Anyway, I do believe I have just enough peasant people, so I'm going to immediately move us into the future age, as that's going to allow us to get on with some good old-fashioned research technologies. And it's the research where we actually have our abilities start to develop. Oh, and it's begun, the Horse Wars! Ah, fantastic, it's high-octane scout cavalry combat. Who will win? Uh, the answer, no one, because they're both completely equally matched. Oh no, the red does appear to be running away. It's a success for the Spanish immediately, as the Japanese player is just not interested in anything. But hey, we've entered into the feudal age, meaning we can immediately start research on fantastic technologies like stone mining, meaning we mine stone faster, or gold mining to mine gold faster. But instead, we're actually just going to research the wheelbarrow technology, which makes our villages faster. Ah, and success, we've taken out the Japanese scout cavalry. Glorious success for us. Oh my, what are the Japanese up to? Well, they're building blacksmiths and markets. Oh my, they're already doing quite a few things. We should probably get on with that. All right, let us build a market. Yes, that seems like a great idea. Now, if everything works out the way I intended to, we hopefully will never actually need to build a military because our villagers are going to be more powerful than any military might in the entire world. Now the thing is this strategy can be attempted by any civilization in Age of Empires 2 because all civilizations have access to the loom technology and the loom technology is great. It basically makes your villagers harder to kill by giving them an extra 15 hit points and some extra armor. Now that's very powerful stuff indeed but anyway we've made our villagers 10% faster and allowed them to carry 25% more resources. A good start. Now the advantages of turning regular villagers into your actual main army is that your villagers only cost 50 food, and food is a pretty easy resource to come by. It's scattered just about everywhere. And now we're just 200 food short of being able to throw ourselves into the castle age, which is the age that we need to actually start accessing our unique technology. So just a couple of extra crumbs of food and then we'll be in a fantastic situation. And if you ever have any spare time where your town center's not doing anything, just make sure to throw 50 gold in and research the loom just to add even more hit points to your civilians. As we can see, our classic little foragers are now up to 40 hit points. Very good. That's quite an improvement from their starting position. And there we go. We've started researching our way into the castle age. Although the Japanese are ahead of us, they've already managed it. They've even built their first castle. So we're probably going to have to expect an attack from them sometime soon-ish. But for the time being, we're safe. Now at the moment, on a technical level, my villagers are actually on par with the Japanese spearmen. As you can see, they have 45 hit points and free attacks 
attack strength. My villagers, however, have the free attack strength and the 40 hit points. So we're going to actually get my villagers to attack this Japanese spearman. Oh no, it appears the Japanese spearman can outrun us. Oh well, that's fine. Eventually we'll catch them. We just have to increase the speed of our villagers once more. And we're bam, Castle Age has been hit. And immediately I'm going to get to work building ourselves our first castle. It does take 650 stone, but it is very much worth it. Make sure any spare resources as well are going into the research of the loom or just any other villager based upgrades. They're very important, trust me. Also, economy upgrades aren't bad at all. For example, I've made it so that my lumberjacks here, they harvest wood at about 80% the normal rate, which is quite good. That is turning them into quite a good, formidable economic force. Improvements into mining is also quite good, but there's quite a limited supply of the resources on the map, so it doesn't make too much of a difference. If anything, it's kind of just a waste. You could just get extra villagers instead. And oh, there we go, fantastic. Our castle is up and running, and I can send everyone back to work. Now, our castle's immediate upgrade is allowing us to research the Inquisition for a faster monk conversion rate. That is quite good, but honestly, it's not worth it. Instead, we need to tech our way up to the Imperial Age to get our peasant upgrades. For that, we're going to need 1,000 food and 800 gold. That's a lot of resources. So what's the best way to do that? Well, it's to sell your stone away, and your wood. Sorry, wood and stone. Now, the Japanese are racing ahead in terms of score. That's because they're going for a very balanced strategy. And also, the AI does have a couple of tricks up its sleeve, but they're doing a great job. They're spreading out. They've got multiple town centers down. The AI is doing great. Us, on the other hand, um, yeah, yeah, we're not exactly doing the uh, meta build, I'm afraid, for Age of Empires. But, you know, we're doing something. We're doing something. Definitely something. In fact, I'm going to add an extra town center of my own just down here to allow us to start harvesting the stone and wood located just outside of our walls. It should also give us an extra base for us to start researching various wheelbarrow based upgrades from. And our villagers are now up to a health of 70. Very good. Whilst their attack isn't very strong, it's that additional armor which is looking quite good. And fantastic, a brand new town center, which basically just means one more place to research the loom from. So yes, yeah, suddenly our peasants are actually looking pretty armored up. And the hit points are very tasty indeed. I mean, this pikeman, for example, is technically worse than our regular villager. Oh, you silly little pikeman and your 55 hit points. You should get on par with the Spanish Mega Villager with a fantastic 85 hit points. Ah oh, yes, balance. Anyway, we're now able to start researching our way into the Imperial Age, which is actually one step ahead of the Japanese, but I do believe the Japanese are preparing themselves for an eventual assault on our castle. And we've almost entered into the Imperial Age. Fantastic stuff. Come on, game, throw us in. Yes, Imperial Age it is, meaning we can get our next upgrade, which is Supremacy, which is for 400 food and 250 gold, villagers have exceptional combat ability. Basically, we are making our villagers ever so slightly more powerful. Now all we need to do is collect ourselves 400 gold, and we're going to be able to increase the attack of each and every one of our villagers. In order to be able to do that, I'm going to be grabbing the wheelbarrow research just once more to increase the speed of our villagers by 10%. And remember, because our villagers are more powerful, they actually hold up in combat quite well, meaning we can grab two villagers here and get them to chase this wild boar. So our two villagers are going to sh shoot this boar, and then what you want to do is have the boar chase you right the way back to your town center. Now normally this is a bit of a scary fight to have, but because my villagers have so many hit points, it's actually going to be completely and utterly fine. And now we can start harvesting the food from the wild boar. A fantastic success. Ah yes, here it is. We can see the Japanese are clearly getting themselves ready for a fight against our villagers. Very good. This is a fantastic sign. So what we want to do is pop off a couple of upgrades to our villagers, and we should actually be ready for a fight. So what we need is the supremacy perk, and in order to rush that, I'm actually going to buy ourselves some food from the marketplace. Oh, it is actually exceedingly expensive, so that's exactly what I'm not going to do. Now, a research which we might actually want to invest into is heresy, because um, basically it means units converted by an enemy monk die instead of converting to the enemy, and that's probably quite a good idea, because otherwise, there's a very real possibility that the enemies are going to be able to convert one of my villagers against me, and my villagers are very powerful. Anyway, now that we have enough food, let us gain supremacy and start training our villagers in the art of war. And now that we've invested in supremacy, as you can see, our villagers have received a plus six to their attack strength, making them three times as powerful as what they normally start out as. I'm also increasing our farms so that we have more food production, which is hopefully going to benefit our empire in the long run. As more farms means more civilians, and more civilians means a larger army, and a larger army means more profit. So at the moment, our villagers now have an attack of 12, 11 normal armor, and 12 piercing armor. Oh, make that now 20. 
20, up 22. So yes, then up to 240 hit points, putting them on par in terms of hit points with a battering ram. Okay, yep, yeah, they have as many hit points as the capped battering ram. Right, that's pretty balanced. Although, as we can see, the enemy are amassing quite a scary army, so we need to prepare ourselves for that. And if anything, it's time we start amassing an army of our own, comprising almost entirely of just peasant workers. Oh my, wow, yes, that is quite the Japanese army. Although, as we can see, they don't actually have that much health. They are all very upgraded, though. But nothing can stop a peasant. Absolutely nothing. And so my army production commences. We have 16 villagers getting pumped out of our main town centre, which are just going to be tasked with standing outside of our front gate. Once we have a large enough force amassed, I'm going to be sending them straight towards the enemy. I'm just seeing what kind of damage our villagers can do. I'm also slowly making them faster and faster with the wheelbarrow perk, till hopefully we can get a villager with the same land speed as four horses. Also, the villager's attack is now up to a fantastic 33, which I'm pretty sure, yes, is uh, it's a fair bit more than a regular halberdier, I'll give it that. And also on top of the fantastic supremacy upgrade, we're also going to be researching sappers, as sappers basically mean that the villagers cause an extra 15 damage when attacking buildings, which is quite a lovely little bonus to have. Basically, it means our villagers are hopefully going to be able to tear through walls quite fast, as they're going to have to be doing that, as I'm not going to be building any siege equipment to support them. I mean, they can fight for themselves. Come on, that's not my job. Oh, and here comes the attack, ladies and gentlemen. We can quite clearly see, yep, the Japanese are sending troops up the middle of the map. They've even got a couple of builders with them. Where are the troops going? Well, it does not matter, for we have our fantastical army waiting to greet them. Go, my villagers, go! Now, my villagers are faster than everyone else. Oh my, they're building a forward archery range. And what is that? Is that a guard tower? Not anymore, it's not. Right, send the villagers. Right, so our villagers have 42 attack and 485 health. Right, attack the people attacking you. Can they one-hit the horses? Yes, they can. Go for the archers next. Go! Fantastic. So our villagers are pouring in, and the Japanese have arrived. Luckily, however, the Japanese forces are no match for our vast quantity of villagers, and it would appear that, yes, success is ours. The only downside is the villagers' AI is not exactly designed for fighting, so it's effectively up to me to single-handedly command them all into glorious combat. Oh my, they're really sending in a very large army, aren't they? This is just a constant line of Japanese armies. How many men do they have? What is this mess? Okay, well, it doesn't matter. We have we have the advantages of numbers on our side. Yes, superior numbers will always win. Right, churn out more villagers, please. Now, luckily, it doesn't particularly matter how many shots the Japanese fire at us, as our armor is so powerful that their shots are actually struggling to penetrate the armor of the villagers. Now, you have to remember that each and every unit we kill is much more valuable than the unit we've produced. You see, each individual elite samurai here costs a very large amount of gold, large amount of resources, and a large time to produce. The villagers, however, are 50 food. They're also faster, stronger, have more health, more armor, more attack, everything. Villagers are just objectively better. All right, so what I'm doing is scheduling my villagers to attack roughly in this general area and hopefully no it would appear the villagers are not doing as i say which is rather annoying they are an absolute pain to try and command around why is it the japanese have this many troops this doesn't make sense game this none of this makes sense so it turns out um micromanaging the massive villager army is the one downside of the massive villager army otherwise it's technically completely immortal and has no counter but yes it's just the um the actual getting there which is the issue but i mean now that i have this many villagers i'm wondering if i can just march them straight down into the enemy base and have them destroy a town center for me right, one of my villagers appears to have made it to a town center of the japanese go villager go well he's actually managing to do it he's technically taking out the town center all right i've got no idea what to do at this point i've just kind of completely broken the game because um i can't defeat the japanese because i can't micromanage the um, civilians well enough <laughs> so I've created a little bit of a mess um, because you can basically command the civilians to attack one AI and after that they just proceed to running away continuously right, I'm just gonna tell all the civilians to sit inside their little house all right you know what I've had enough this is complete and utter chaos I can just hear the bells going off constantly yeah you know what? this is enough Frank there you go that that's Spain in a nutshell that's what you can do in Age of Empires 2 if you play against a real human being oh god oh what a mess what have I done? Now, if you're wondering where I get my amazing powers from when it comes to powering the Spanish peasant population to becoming effectively near-immortal teleporting beings with the highest attack in the game, excluding the superior trebuchet, then, as you should know, it comes from the refreshing taste of Yorkshire tea. Mmm, it's fantastic. 
You see, just one sip of Yorkshire tea is enough to power someone into literal godhood. It takes your regular scrub nub Spanish villager and turns them into effectively an immortal warrior. They're so powerful, absolutely nothing can stop them. And so can you if you buy some 100% not sponsored Yorkshire tea today. It's fantastic. Alternatively, you can consume it in Spivco approved consumption devices. Oh my! The Boffins calls these little bad boys mugs. It's fantastic. And look how Jazzy it is. Wouldn't you love to own one? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Yes, there is only one answer, and that's yes. Ah, oh, and there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You never caught to catch me at the end point of the video? Oh, wait, I guess that is where I'm expected to jump in. Sadly, after recording Age of Empires 2 for about five hours, I sat down and realized that the footage did uh, not quite come to an acceptable quantity. As fun as it would have been to drop a Age of Empires 2 video, which was well over 45 minutes long, it makes slightly more sense to separate the two into two separate videos. That's exactly what we've done today. I know, it's terrible. You're going to have to wait one extra a day to get your fantastic next dose of Age of Empires 2 content where we're going to be turning Ethiopia into the most terrifying nation in the entirety of the world. But hey, if you are interested in seeing that, then feel free to give the video a like and I'll make sure to bump it up the schedule so that it'll come out before any other videos that we have planned. And as always, a massive thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons who make these fantastic videos all the more possible with their crazy donations. I mean, you should see what some of these people are offering. I mean, the fact that people pay one dollar a month to support me it's absolutely madness that we find ourselves in this way but it's actually fantastic thank you very much for allowing me to buy some fantastically silly things to make these videos all the more better i mean you should see my new mechanical keyboard you can probably hear my new mechanical keyboard and that's why i'm probably going to have to buy <laughs> some kind of sound suppressing thing because of this massive mechanical keyboard my goodness but hey if you're wondering what other video to watch next then look no further than this one on screen now it has been genuinely hand-picked by myself to be absolutely perfect for just you. That's right, only you. This is the one that you're going to want to watch. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I've been the Spiffing Brit, and I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day, and goodbye for now.